provide a brief recap. We talked about the SI units, and here we see that there are several listed for mass, length, time, etc. We're going to talk more specifically today about measurement. Now, base units are the ones that do not have prefixes, and here are some examples. Notice that there's um, just the unit by itself, nothing in front of it. Base units are prefix are, are um, units without prefixes. We do in the metric system add prefixes quite frequently to correlate with how big or small whatever it is that we're measuring. Um, one thing that you do need to be familiar with here is how to write numbers in scientific notation. I would assume that you guys can do this. So big numbers are going to have positive exponents and this is how scientific notation would look. The number of people in the, in the world I think is around what seven billion or so give or take. So in this case um, we would write 7 times 10 to the 9 people. That's equivalent to 7 billion, which is written out like this in the long form. So notice that the decimal point was moved 9 places to the left, and that's where we end up with this exponent of 9. Now, small numbers are going to have negative exponents. The diameter of an atom, obviously atoms are going to be really tiny. So this is very, very um, approximate. But the diameter of an atom is about 1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Obviously, that's a tiny number. That's what it would look like. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so it's not very convenient to write a number with that many zeros, and that's the reason we use scientific notation is for convenience. Here are the metric prefixes. If you're unfamiliar with this or don't have this chart shown uh, in a convenient place, you might want to jot these prefixes down and pay attention to this part, the scientific notation, specifically the exponents. That's what we are going to need to pay attention to. Do you need to know every single one of these? Absolutely not. There are some that are more common in chemistry. Here are the ones that are uh, most important for us that you should have memorized, starting with kilo up at the top, 10 to the third. Okay, just to give you a frame of reference, a kilometer is a distance from North High School to the Fargo Dome. Centi is next here, 10 to the negative one. One centimeter is about the width of a uh, finger. Maybe this one maybe depends on how big your fingers are, but approximately the width of my little finger is a centimeter. A millimeter is the thickness of a dime, so it's really not very thick. Now micrometers, it starts getting to things that are too small to see with the naked eye. Now, I don't have an example of something that is one micrometer, but a red blood cell is about, from edge to edge, about 10 micrometers. This is the symbol for micro. It's called uh, Greek letter mu. Now nano is a thousand times smaller than a micrometer. So it goes from 10 to the negative 6, 10 to the negative 9. One nanometer is approximately the diameter of one buckyball, which is a carbon uh, molecule that has 60 atoms in a spherical shape. Again, here, here's a list showing those prefixes. If you don't know them, jot them down. Now try these out. What do you think would be a reasonable um, unit of measure for these? We're not going to do every example here. We'll just pick a few. So the mass of an airplane. Okay, We use grams to measure airplanes. One gram is about the mass of one paper clip. Would it be reasonable to measure that in grams? No. It would probably be reasonable to measure it in megagrams. Megagrams is a million grams. That's what I would use. The width of your finger, we already discussed, that's a centimeter. Diameter of a piece of hair, uh, micrometers, or nanometers. It's about 50 micrometers. How about this one? The mass of an ant. Okay, so one paper clip is one gram. So I would probably use centigrams or probably milligrams. So that's a, um, a few examples. Please try the rest on your own. What about this example? If we were to place these in order from uh, smallest to largest, look at these prefixes and tell me which one of these is the smallest. Okay, I see an example. Okay, remember that nano is 10 to the negative 9. Okay, so the smallest one would be 1 nanometer. Okay, after that, I'm looking for another one that's really small. 
micro is 10 to the negative 6. Okay, let's look at these other examples. We finished that one now. This has no um, prefix, so that's the base unit. Centimeter is to the negative 1. Now, ter terameters, that's big, very big, 10 to the 12th. It's a, a trillion. And kilometers here is 10 to the 3rd. So you can just go based on these exponents. From here, we would go to meters, 10 to the 0. Oops, I forgot one. It would be centimeters here. Okay, so we've uh, checked this one off, this one off. Then it will be kilometers. And then from there will be, of course, a terameter. Wow, that's a really long distance. Now here are some example problems if we're going to do conversions. And this is where we're going to use a process called dimensional analysis. So here we have converting from grams to kilograms. Okay, grams to kilograms. So kilogram, gram. How many of these are equal to each other? Well, this is what I want you to think of. Which one of these is bigger? Is a kilogram bigger or a gram bigger? Well, a kilogram is bigger. Kilo is 10 to the third. 10 to the third, you could write that. That's good. Or if you want to write it out of scientific notation, you could write it as a thousand grams. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to take our given value, which is this one right here, 456. And we're going to do a calculation. We're going to stick a 1 underneath here. What we're doing here is we're going to do a conversion. The mathematical operation I'm using right here is multiplying. So we're multiplying the numbers in the top, dividing by the numbers in the bottom. Whatever unit I have here, I'm going to write that unit here. Okay. Then I'm going to look at this conversion. I need to pick the one that has grams in it. I'm going to use this one, 1,000 grams. I'm going to write that next to it, 1,000 grams. And on the top, I'm going to write one kilogram. The reason I've done this is that if I have grams in the top and grams in the bottom, they will cancel out. So this is how I convert. I'll take 456 times 1 divided by 1 times 1,000, and I end up with 0.456. My unit now is kilograms. Now I want you to ask yourself this question. Does that make sense? Does 456 grams um, is that equal to 0.456 kilograms? Remember, a kilogram is um, one kilogram for every thousand grams. It makes perfect sense. Same idea here. We're going to set up our work like this, put our given 2.1 meters. We're going to put meters on the bottom. You can put a one here if you wish. It's not required. We're converting it to centimeters. We need to think about what's the conversion. Now, this is a base unit. It has no prefix. So between meters and centimeters, ask yourself, which one of these is bigger? Is a centimeter bigger or is a meter bigger? Meter is bigger. I'm going to say one big, bigger meter. So how many centimeters are in that? Centi means a hundredth. So that means there are 100 centimeters in one meter. I'm going to match them up now. Meters in the bottom, put the one there. Centimeters is on the top, put 100 there. Meters will cancel, and then we're going to multiply 2.1 times 100. So it's 210 centimeters is our final answer here. This last example that I've chosen for you is a little bit more difficult. Notice that we're converting from picometers to millimeters. They're, um, they both have a prefix. So I'm going to do two conversions picometers to meters, meters to uh, millimeters. All right, which one of these is bigger, pico or a regular meter? One meter is a lot bigger. And so how many picometers are in one meter? There's a lot of them. There's 10 to the 12th. There's a billion picometers in one meter. The next conversion that I'm going to use goes from meters to millimeters. Which one of these is bigger? A meter, which is about um, the height of a child, or a millimeter, which is the thickness of a dime? Well, obviously, a meter is larger, and there are a thousand millimeters in one meter. Okay, So let's begin again. Take our given here, 
0.2 picometers. And that's how we have to do it. We have to take this unit, PM, we have to put that on the bottom so it's going to cancel. We go look at our conversions. 10 to the 12th goes next to the picometer unit, and 1 meter goes on the top. Now this cancels out. Picometers cancels out. But I'm not done because it, I wasn't asked how many meters it is. I was asked to convert it to millimeters. So I'm going to do another step. Okay, that's how I organize my work. Whatever unit I have here on the top, I'm going to put that unit on the bottom because I want it to go away. I've already used this conversion factor. I'm going to use this conversion factor. One meter is equal to a thousand millimeters. Okay, so now meters cancels. And what do I have left? I'm going to look at my uh, units here. So this is really um, something that you might want to use your calculator for. It, it depends. It's just personal preference. So I'm going to do something sim to simplify it for myself. Um, here, this I'm going to convert to scientific notation, which is really 10 to the third. Okay, so I have 76.2 times 10 to the third. I'm dividing it by 10 to the 12th, the unit is millimeters. Okay, uh, 10 to the 12th goes in the 10 to the 3rd. Remember if you're dividing by numbers in scientific notation, you're subtracting their exponents. So it's really 76.2 times 10 to the negative 9 millimeters. I'm actually going to leave it in that form for now and we'll talk about how to convert that to a more proper form